So hey everybody, this is Randy Otterbridge from the Earn Every Dine Online Show. And I tell you, we've got a, a very great guest who has allowed me to come into his classroom and, and talk to his students. And what I wanted to talk with you guys today about, though, is this awesome book that he's got out, Financial Master Planner. Today's guest is Dondre Brown. Hello, hello. Yes, my name is Dondre Brown. I am the founder of 1428 Financial Wellness, where we help you take control of your finances. No excuses, any means necessary. So you heard that no excuses and by any means necessary. So as I look at this planner, man, I, you know, I was able to read it over and take some notes. And I can tell you, there are some areas in here that I'm really curious about. <laughs> Number one was page 12. Right? Okay. So as you guys are listening in, and um, we're going to put in the description field, and I'll try to get a photo out to you too, of how this particular book looks. And it's different. There's some things in here that I noticed that were very different than other plans that I've seen. Uh, but I really liked on page 12 where you lay it out. Right, you talk about the credit cards, how many you know credit card loans people might have. Mm -hmm. Right, the balances. That's all pretty natural and pretty normal. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about having this as a template, can can people go in and change a little bit of this? Yes. Yeah, so this um, actual template is available online, which will it allow you to make adjustments to the names as well as if you want to uh, change the interest rates and all those things. So we make it really interactive for you. That's good. And you know, for my Earn Every Dime Onlineers, you know, having a, a budget is awfully, this is just smart, isn't it? This is an awfully good time to do that because sometimes because we're doing so many things online, we may not track the same way if it's as if it were an offline opportunity, right? Because we're buying ads, we're, you know, maybe not keeping a track of the little things that slip through our fingers. You know, if we send somebody some coffee or something, we got to keep a track of all that stuff by any means necessary, as Dante yeah. says, right? <laughs> right? So you see the importance of having something like this. And what we want to do is go through this book a little bit. I'm really pleased with it. I've been helping, you know, Dondre get it out into the hands of folks because I really think it'll help them out a lot. Yeah. And I tell you, you know, when, you know, one of the things that I noticed, like, let's say if we take a look at page 14, mm -hmm. there's these little sayings in here. And I think for the people that are watching this, I'm going to go ahead and put this up for you. Look at this. They've got these little sayings in here. Schedule time each month to review your budget, all right? Okay, we kind of get that. But look at this one. On 17, here's something interesting. It says budgeting is 20% numbers and 80% behavior. Can you explain a little bit what you mean by that? Yeah, so when I first wanted to create this planner, um, one, it was through my experience and what I was able to utilize to um, get out of debt, but also take control of my finances. But what I wanted to do was add a realistic spin to it and really add language that fits your life, right? Fits your lifestyle. And when we talk about the budget being 20% numbers, we're essentially talking about um, how much you spend, your expenses, right? Mm -hmm. Your income. But when we talk about that behavioral piece, uh, more times than not, we are what we do, right? And it's very difficult to break certain habits and behaviors. So if we can focus majority of our time on those aspects, mm -hmm. more than likely we'll be able to uh, make an important and intentional adjustments to our budget. So, for example, if you know that you are an habitual spender or impulsive shopper, no matter if you get $1,000 one paycheck <laughs> or $3,000, you're still going to uh, be an impulsive buyer. So let's focus on... Um, why that is right how can we make adjustments how can we plan for you know some of those impulsive buys and create a fund that will allow you to do that uh, so that was the goal behind budgeting is 20 percent numbers and 80 like percent behavior so that that's really good if you start thinking about it you know you don't try to necessarily change the behavior because guess what the behavior might win it has been winning for all these years <laughs> yep. and it might just win but you can judo it right I talk a little bit about this in some of my courses is how do we judo the behavior? Use the behavior's strength against it, right? So when you start saying, create a fund, that's a judo move, right? You say, okay, listen, give, your, give yourself the opportunity to spend mm -hmm. by creating the fund 
so that yeah. you don't have that, you know, that old binge, like when people are trying to lose weight, you know, <laughs> you, you stop the behavior for a while and then you binge and it all comes mm -hmm. back, right? Yeah. Or you just super spin. I like that mm -hmm. when I saw that in the book itself. And, and there's some other ones. There's this one on page uh, 20 here. It says, more than a New Year's resolution, keep up the good work. So you get a little bit of inspiration. That's what I liked about this. Mm -hmm this particular book is that it's just not saying show me your numbers put down your expenses show us how you know terrible you are with money and all that kind of stuff it's giving you some inspiration and that was something that I was encouraged to see when you put that one down what was the idea to be encouraging to be motivating yeah definitely so um, I consider my approach to finances uh, similar to um, as Randy was using the analogy fitness right so for fitness, if someone said, hey, go lose weight, right, you're less likely to do that. But if they can inspire you, motivate you um, to want to do that, also okay. with it coupled being something that you really want to do, you're more likely to respond better. Um, specifically, the more than a New Year's resolution, we know every year finances <laughs> is one of the top three uh, cause of action that people make yeah. every single every year. Every single year. I want to save money. I want to get out of debt. I want to invest. Um, it has something to do with finances. But around, let's say, three months in, they typically forget it. Just uh, like the gym. The gym <laughs> is full. Yeah. <laughs> and then three months in, it's not so full. So this is more than a, a New Year's resolution. So the goal was that you don't make these promises um, that you can't keep to yourself, right? You make these small adjustments and changes to your life, um, to your behavior, so that it's more than a New Year's resolution. Um, there's no reason to make a promise or a commitment that you know you're gonna struggle um, to, to uphold, but more so just something very small, uh, something month by month that you can commit to. And I'm noticing throughout is that you have tithing, Right, and that's what fourteen twenty eight. You want to explain what fourteen twenty eight? Where that comes from? Yeah, so uh, fourteen twenty eight is named after the scripture Luke fourteen twenty eight, as Jesus was telling his disciples, using an analogy: before you build a building, you must first count the cost. And one of the things we do in fourteen twenty eight, mirrored with the eighteen twenty um, understanding, is we help you count the cost, right? The the numbers part, right? But not only the numbers, the behavior. So while you're counting those dollars, what is it going to cost you? cost your behavior right to make some changes based mm, on your that's, financial that's goals interesting mm -hmm. you're associating and just putting it right out front that there is a cost now don't get me wrong you know I, I'm a tremendous money saver <laughs> saver but the point is is because I used to be the other way right I used mm -hmm. to be you know not too good at it and became much much better mm -hmm. because I had to change some behaviors and I'm gonna tell you behavior is so hard to change because you know the mind and the body wants what it wants it right. wants comfort mm -hmm. and when you start talking about in this particular case you're talking about giving and donating tithing charity that you know that kind of hurts sometimes when you're trying to do your other stuff but if you are baking it right into and this is what I see here on page 21 mm -hmm. is you're baking it right into your monthly budget yep. understand it don't stop that Mm -hmm. you're, you're tithed, you're 10%, you're giving, you know, the law of reciprocity still works for you, but if you stop giving, there you go. Yep. And I, I know some of the things that people fall into as they are givers, right? I'm a huge giver, and one of the things I didn't do was plan my giving, right? Giving is not a bad thing. We think about tithing, charity, those things are first for a reason. I always tell people, show me your budget, I'll show you what you believe or what you value because we use money to place value on what's important Ooh, to us. Say that again. So, <laughs> tell, show, me your, show me your budget. Yeah, show me your budget. I'll show you what you value. Uh, we place value um, in terms of dollars on things that are important to us, right? So if tithing, giving, charity is important to you, why not position yourself to be a giver, right? Mm -hmm. That way you give without regret, right? We have people who tithe and, and who give or provide things to charity, and then they go home and they second guess it, right? When you're supposed to tithe or give, you're supposed to do that without any regret. You're supposed to do that with a joyous behavior. That's right. So those are some of the things that I really wanted to be intentional about with this uh, planner. And I see here that uh, I think this is the first time I've ever seen that you have allotted for Uber, Lyfts, Bus, right? Mm -hmm. If you got to give your friends money, 
You know, <laughs> you're riding a bike and you get a flat tire. I mean, but the main thing is, is that you want to have a budget for that stuff, right? And my earn every dime onliners out there know that sometimes these are the things that we overlook sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. again, you know, we look at our PayPal account and we start seeing that money's flowing in, and mm -hmm. you know, we didn't account for. You know, the ad spend, if we're doing ad spends, we didn't account for the time mm -hmm. that it took because your time is worth something as well. You've got to remember that. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to introduce this to you and show you this because it goes just, it goes beyond, um, you know, just anybody. It goes mm -hmm. to us too if we're working online. Now here's this one, page 23. This is a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> Explain that one for me. Yeah, so when you think about a sprint, right, it's something fast and it's supposed to end soon. But when you think about a marathon, it's more methodical, right? It's something that, um, first of all, you have to really train for it, right? It, it, it takes time, right? It takes patience. It, it takes effort and a certain level of commitment and consistency. So that's the analogy that I was really going for by helping people understand we're not in the... Uh, microwave business right as some people like to say when we think about finances this is more of a crock pot where you kind of let it sit settle you continuously work on it um, and then you set up accountability uh, by talking to other people and you just plan for it right and then over time it gets better like all things yeah and you know this is the tortoise and hare conversation all over again right we understand you know, you think, oh, I want to, uh, you know, I'm a hare. Well, okay, if you're a hare, you're going to run out. You know, you're going to run out of energy, and the tortoise is going to look at you as he passes or she passes and mm -hmm. say, you know what, this is a, the long haul, marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. And I notice here on uh, page, I think it's page 22, that you've got Netflix, Hulu. Now, you know you're probably going to have to update that because I, I, I oh, suspect man. that in some years, maybe those, uh, those companies might not be around, you know. But anyway, but I like that. Mm -hmm. Netflix, Hulu, other. Right, and then your your traditionals, your insurance, pets, mm -hmm. right? Pets. I had no idea how much <laughs> pets cost. My parents, you know, they had the dogs, and I never got one or a cat. But I mean, I was. I've got mm -hmm. friends who have pets now, and man, sometimes the pets have to get new hips. Man, <laughs> right? if you move into an apartment, you have to pay a, a monthly fee for your pet, depending on the apartment. Uh, you talk about the cleaning up after a pet, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, new hips, any medical emergencies. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have, a pet is just equivalent to pet insurance. Care. There's, yes. There's. How many times do you put that in? I'm serious. <laughs> sure. How many times do you put pet insurance? Mm -hmm. Those become the little money leaks. Yep. Right, I kind of I, I liken it to, hey, you can pour a whole bunch of water, but if you got a whole bunch of leaks, eh, there you go. Right, it's, it's grooming come right out. Like getting your pet groomed, that that costs too. And don't 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 try to groom it, groom the pet yourself. We, that's just not a good look. <laughs> right, I remember back in the day when I was saving money, uh, very very heavily, I would cut my own hair. Right, and I tell you, mm -hmm. looking back on that, that was a mistake, because every now and then, more often than not. I jacked it up, right? It was some areas that you just can't see that your barber can see. <laughs> but I mean, I saved myself twenty dollars. Oh boy, mm -hmm. I should have just went on and paid the money, right? <laughs> but we understand when you're trying to save money, the key is, like Dandre says, by any means necessary. That's the seriousness, and that's why I wanted to do a podcast just on this. It's right around Christmas time, and I tell you, we overspend. We overspend because we want to see our loved ones have a good time, right? Now, you know, I think I wrapped my own gifts back in the day, you know, and I don't know if we used, uh, I think we used, we didn't use scotch tape. I think there was some, like, some duct tape going on. <laughs> I was like, is this tape white? What's going on here? Some, what do they call it, Elmer's? I don't know. Yeah. Even, Elmer's glue. <laughs> Elmer's glue. But the point yeah. is, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, your parents are doing the best they can by you, but nowadays we see that the overspending, the credit card use, mm -hmm is running rampant. Now, this is no judgment. We're just saying. Uh, and what we suggest is looking at this book as a means to get your finances back, yeah. right? Get them back. Get your money back, back in order. Get it straight again. Using something like this can really, really help you. So the question I have, what do you find as the most difficult thing when you're introducing this or when you're doing a workshop on this that people have in adopting I think it's just the um, sense of awareness, right? People are afraid to 
uh, see their reality, right? So that's why I start the planner off with a financial reality check, mm -hmm. right? Let's just cut to it. Let's really um, take this assessment. It's on page four, I believe, um, where you can start to look at some of your financial behavior. Um, so that's one of the things we really focus on. Um, some people come to me like, I know that I have issues with spending, <laughs> but I'm not ready to deal with it right now. Oh, wow. Um, I'm not good with numbers, I have all this debt. So I think it's really overcoming uh, the fear factor, right? Taking that first step and, and that leap of faith to understand that sometimes you have to invest in accountability and support because the profit is going to be um, a lot of money, right? A lot of control, yeah. Um, yeah. less stress. Uh, so thinking about how, how I grew up in a single parent household, my mom was stressed all the time, right? She was frustrated. Uh, she lived paycheck to paycheck. Uh, and as we think about today, 78% of Americans are in a very similar situation. So that's the goal of really trying to help people overcome that. And that's a good thing. I tell you, for Christmas, I got uh, a couple of requests that I denied. And I said, how about if I did this? How about if I pay off some of your debt? Right? Now think about that as a Christmas gift. Now, most times you'll get what? wait, what? I want something tangible in my hands. But I says, listen, here is a guaranteed way to make 15%. Right? When I start rocking in a language like that, you get the stares. And uh, so it was like, look, here's how, here's what I mean. If you have a credit card of 15, 20, 25% and I can pay it off for you, you just save yourself that money. Right. Right. Or for that matter, if I give you the money, you pay it off. That's a 15 to 20% return on your money. Now this is conversation before you're starting to talk about investing. I says, well, right. here's the best way to invest. Yeah. Yep. Pay off some debt. There you go. Automatic, instant, that money back. guaranteed return. Now, of course, you can't go back into debt after it's paid <laughs> off. You, gotta, you know, shut the credit card down, stuff like that. But that becomes, yeah. you know, what I wanted to talk about on page 26 is you've got an area where people can get their free credit report. Just kind of take a look at it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the goal is to focus on your credit report. Um, as opposed to your credit score. Uh, and the reason why I mention it that intentionally and say credit report mm -hmm. is because sometimes we can become fixated on our credit score. Mm. Um, when you think about how the credit score is calculated, it's based on your relationship in history to debt, right? So don't focus on that right now. Focus on what your credit report says because there are a lot of good things that you can find in your credit report. First of all, you want to check it for identity theft, right? There are millions of people that experience identity theft mm -hmm. each it's year. It's happened to me before. You think about the holiday season, um, you, did, you made a lot of purchases, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're not keeping track of those purchases, someone can slip in and make a purchase with your identity, right? Whether it's your credit card, information, even your social security number. So you want to check for that in the new year. So I leave a link um, on my planner that allows you to do mm -hmm. it for free. You can do it for free oh, each good. year. That's good. Then the other piece is just so that you can become more comfortable in looking at your history of spending, mm. right? Again, mm. the, the fear factor is not becoming aware or fearing uh, being aware of your finances. We're addressing it right now. Maybe yeah. you find something on your credit report that is only $50, right? Back then it was a lot of money, but now you can probably afford to pay it off. Just right? send the money. Right, you can do it that way, um, and then there's that seven-year rule. I, I, I just I was talking to somebody the other day that said they were actually able to get this successfully disputed mm -hmm. because what they did was they noticed something from, they originally had taken this out in 2010, but then there was another notation on there for 2014 as if she was living in a certain area. She says, I wasn't there, called the people up, I don't know if it was Credit Karma or whomever, and mm -hmm. says, I wasn't there. But what they were doing was they were aging, re-aging the account. So you got the seven-year drops off, blah, 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 right? So they had says, no, no, wait a minute. We had some kind of contact in 2014. And she was like, no, no, they didn't. Mm -hmm. And was able to successfully get that off. It was only a couple of bucks, but that couple of bucks was the difference. And another thing when we think about paying off debt, you want to look at your credit report to see all of your debt. Sometimes I tell people right now isn't the best time to wake up sleepy debt. And what I mean by that is if, it is, if it's an account that's on your credit report and it's not accumulating any interest um, and there's no penalty right now, mm -hmm. maybe you want to focus on um, paying off something that has a higher interest debt. rate. Yeah, so we don't, when you talk about getting out of debt, 
it's more strategy than just throwing money at stuff, mm -hmm. right? Because you can be paying off a debt right now at a lower interest rate where you can probably shift your dollars and your energy toward another one and give yourself a raise because it's a higher interest rate. Mm -hmm. And now you can use your funds from that higher interest rate that you've paid off or that higher debt to pay on your lower debt with the lowest interest rate. So again, you want to go in with the strategy. And sometimes when you create a strategy, you can't do it alone. You need to talk to other people or you need someone else that can look at it and help you develop that strategy. You know, and that's a good thing. I, uh, I tell you, I can remember a time where, and, and you had mentioned it earlier about looking at your credit credit report, not your credit score. I remember one time I, you know, I got in, I don't know, I decided to just look at the credit score and it was like really low. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute, I don't have any debt. I, my house was paid for, <laughs> I had no credit cards, but get this, come to find out. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't have yeah. those debt things mm -hmm. that I had a low credit score. It's like I, I'm paying cash for everything. It's like right. well, now to me, it didn't matter because I I wasn't trying to accumulate more debt. But the ideal of looking at that credit score and getting a shock when I didn't owe anybody anything and, and in essence pay cash for everything. I thought well that kind of stinks. Mm -hmm. It was a little ego hit, right? I think I went out and got a credit card for that. <laughs> and I tell people that's the analogy of like, uh, remember grade school where we would get a C and we're like, dang, I should have got an A, right? Your credit report or your credit score actually is like a grade, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a C, that may not be a bad thing, right? You have to really dig into your report to see why you have that C. As Randy said, paying for cash will lower your credit score, right? So when people are always like, uh, well, I want to get my finances right so I can increase my credit score. I'm like, why, first of all, and then do you know what that entails? They may be in a situation where they're paying cash for everything, mm -hmm. right? So if they want to buy something and they want to use their credit score for it, maybe there's a way you can pay cash for it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. What did you mean by, on page 29, you says, remember your why and your financial goals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, uh, whys are important, right? There are times where you feel like you're being forced to do something, but if your why doesn't include um, you being a part of that why, or your why isn't big enough, you're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And for me, why stands for what helps you, right? The W, what, H is helps, and then the Y is you, right? What helps you, I like that. What helps you get over X, right? What, make, what helps you uh, make whatever sacrifices, short-term sacrifices you need to make based on your financial mm -hmm. goals. So your why is that driver, right? My why for me was living in a household, um, and feeling helpless when my mom was struggling financially, yeah. right? Yeah. For me, that, that left many uh, nights of feeling helpless, uh, upset, anger, right? Uh, being, being a young man in a household and your mom is struggling and you know you want to support her mm -hmm. um, and not really knowing how because you have no idea how to manage money or manage your own money, mm -hmm. that was a struggle for me. Another piece is um, your why can also be um, what propels you. So for example, some people's why is a vacation, right? I want to take my first, va first vacation, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, some other people's why, like my why is to be the last generation that starts from scratch, right? For my kids, I teach them money, mm -hmm. right? In order to teach them, I feel like I needed to learn more, right? And you know, sometimes we learn most through our failures, Absolutely. but being able to utilize those um, to propel yourself financially has really helped me teach my kids. So that's, that's one of my biggest whys. My kids are not going to have very similar stories of, oh, well, dad did not teach me this mm -hmm. or dad did not show me this. It will probably be, well, dad told me and I didn't listen. But I, <laughs> I'll much rather that be the story than them having the absence of um, information and knowledge, knowing that stuff. it took me a long time and a, uh, a lot of struggle to get to where I am now. Yeah, yeah my big one was freedom. Right. Yeah. I wanted to have the opportunity to take time off work and I've done it mm -hmm. a couple of times, you know, mm -hmm. multiple years off the nine to five to explore different areas. And it all be it's all because I looked at what my financial impact would be, mm -hmm. right, by taking this time off and saving for that time. Yeah. Right. So and and to break it down, it was really looking at what you were earning at or earning net at the job, mm -hmm. saving that up. You know, and there's ways you can do it. I mean, don't get me wrong. There was some sacrifice, if you will. You right. know, I had to cut off some cable and, you know, I had to eat at the house and, you know, barbecues <laughs> in the backyard kind of a thing. 
but I was able to save up a certain amount of money and then take two years off, mm -hmm. explore whole new careers, whole new opportunities, mm -hmm. go back to work, bring all that knowledge, mm -hmm. right, and then yep. do it another, mm -hmm. <laughs> do it work for three years and then take another time off. So it was the freedom, and now I'm in full entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. It's all because I understand how to, you know, turn that dollar, you know, right. squeeze that dollar and make it holler, if you will, right? <laughs> so, and if you want to be in that same kind of position, that's that's what this is all about. And, mm -hmm. you know, books like this, you know, just, just kind of helps you. You know, mm -hmm. it really has you look at all the things that affect your ability to do the things that you really want to do. Yes, and that's freedom, right? So when we say, what is freedom? Freedom is the ability to control, right? yourself and in order to control yourself you have to one know what you need to control right just face it yeah. um, there are many people who are have the same story but the difference is they don't know how to get out of it uh -huh. so uh, situations and, and resources that myself and Randy provide is to help you take control which is also freedom yeah and that's the wonderful thing I, I love what you said here on page 32 plan past the first and the fifteenth. What exactly? Because something happens on the first and the fifteenth, right? <laughs> yes. So if you are like me and other people out there, typically your first or fifteenth is when you get your money, right? That's paycheck time. Paycheck <laughs> time. But historically, people budget when they get paid, mm. right? So first they budget on the first or fifteenth, and then they budget for the first and fifteenth. Budget past that, right? Create a budget where you're looking at next month. Right, the next six months, the next year, right? Start to think about the long term gain that you want from your money instead of positioning yourself to when you get paid. Now you're trying to run all the numbers and yeah. all these other emergencies yeah. have come up, and uh, you know that once you uh, finish paying off all those things, you don't have any money for the next week, the next two weeks, or even the next month. Another big piece is treat your budget like a forecaster, right? So if you budget the month before, you'll know what income and expenses or you'll know most of your income and expenses that you need to have or pay for before the next month comes. Yeah. So the budget should not lend itself to you being surprised the next month. You That's know right. there may be a birthday next month. Mm -hmm. You know that um, there may be a holiday next month. You know that that bonus is coming from um, your job next month. So again, this really allows you to budget past the 1st and the 15th. You know, it's a fun thing that I used to do is I would say, everybody, get behind me. In other words, all the bills don't come first because they didn't go to the job and work that. <laughs> I come first. So I would literally, no, seriously, I would literally pay myself. Yep. And I mean, yep. this works like a super charm. Because once you decide that I'm the one that gets paid first, and I would typically, now this is, this was radical even back in the day, right? I was like, you know, I would take 25% yeah. off the top. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gross, y'all. Gross. <laughs> and I mean, now this was so radical because people, how are people going to get paid? I'm like, well, they're going to get paid after this. Right. And that's what it became, mm -hmm. you know, a, a situation of is that, look, you're paying yourself because you're the one that goes into that job and puts up with that boss. You know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about. Put up with that boss, so why not pay yourself first? And then here's something that I I would also do is that when I would get a raise, now this is crazy, right? I would get a raise. I would also reduce my expenses by that same amount. That meant turning something off. That meant selling stuff. But then that that's almost like doubling the raise. Now this right. is the stuff that you know you mm -hmm. and I talk about and that we're mm -hmm. workshopping on and stuff. Yeah. And then when we start talking about the extra things that you can do. Right, that mm -hmm. helps not just pay off your debt, but also remember that twenty five percent that goes to you. Right, you you look at yourself as a bill. The biggest bill, yes. no matter how tall you are, the biggest bill becomes you. Right. right? Yeah. So then mm -hmm. pay that bill first, mm -hmm. and then start thinking about the other ways. Now we've got some other strategies that you know uh, Dondre and I are workshopping on now. Mm -hmm. we're, we're putting yeah. some stuff together to really start, start talking about making this even more powerful and even more leverage. I'm going to be bringing in some of the talents that I have as far as, you know, helping people make money and monetize their life and yes. all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then this budgeting using this book 
to absolutely leverage that. That's what's going to be the fun. So be be on the lookout for that stuff. Yes. But this last one that I really love, this one, this one got me going here. It says, and this is on page thirty-eight. Um, so investing means your money makes money. Is increasing education decreases fear. Oh, I like that. So the more you can educate yourself on something, right? Start to talk to people, start to invest into mm -hmm. workshops, invest into education to grow your money. That's the best profit you can have. So there are apps out there where you can invest as low as a dollar. Right? Mm -hmm. You can invest start investing a dollar. So imagine you put your dollar in some some place, right? And then you make a couple uh, pennies, a couple nickels. Mm -hmm. You didn't do much for that, right? So now you flip that and put ten dollars in, right? That's good. And now you're making a dollar or so, right? And then you put a hundred dollars in, right? You you see where I'm going with this? Um, it allows and you you're to pay really off bills, so you're giving yourself that instant fifteen percent, twenty percent, whatever the credit card or whatever is costing mm -hmm. you. Yep. So there are times where, for example, when I was budgeting, I was like, how can I start to get into this investing world? And I was reading books on investing. I was uh, on social media. I was doing all this stuff uh, with investing. And I'm like, I feel like I'm not investing. I'm learning, but I'm not doing. Mm -hmm. Because I always tell people there's a difference between knowing and doing. There's a lot of stuff we know, but how can you position yourself to do? So what I started to do was instead of going out to the movies, right? Um, I would find a way to watch the movie at home for free and then take that money that I was going to spend there on the is. movies and invest it, right? So now my money's making money. I'm at home still watching my movie, and uh, I go to sleep and wake up with money. That's great. Now, you guys, you know, you don't want to hear how I started saving because I tell you, I was, <laughs> I was calling folks up and says, you have Wednesday to feed me. <laughs> I'll be over your house on Wednesday, and then we'll take that difference. Really, I mean, you know, would take uh, I think it was a dollar thirty-five to work. You know, back mm -hmm. when uh, you know pops were like a thirty-five cents at the, at mm. the company, right? And then a dollar to get a sandwich, and that was it. That was the budget for the for the day. Mm -hmm. You know, now imagine that, right? You, uh, it, but it worked. It works mm -hmm. very very well. And why wait till you have to do it, right? To get started on it, right? Mm -hmm. And I was doing this when I didn't have to, so I was kind of you know pushing the envelope a little bit, right? But it worked, and it allowed me again to have some freedom. You know, mm -hmm. when uh, at, at our company, after some years, the plant ended up closing. But because I had taken these kind of strategies to heart, by mm -hmm. doubling down when we got a raise, right? Mm -hmm. By using here's another one, and this is in the book, but this is a little extra stuff. When when the company was offering to pay for our college, right, and it was a write off to them and they were getting some smarter folks. I did that every year up to a master's degree, right? So I'm serious, you start adding that up. They're giving you, I used to go literally run around the plant and tell people about this because, and I would have them do the math. I says, okay, if they're allowed to do 5,200, I don't know, you know, 2,500, it was 5,200 dollars a year or something like that. And you had to take certain classes, business classes or whatever, and I says, look, Look at that as a raise. Divide that by 2,080 hours, which is, you know, 40 hours, sign 52 weeks, blah, blah, blah. All right, I know I'm not, I'm not a math nerd either. But, uh, but the point is that what that allowed you to see is that, wait a minute, I'm getting a raise. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm making them give me a raise by literally going to school on their dime. Are you kidding me? And if you have any job out there right now, I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Any job out there right now that allows you to go to school, they're going to pay for it. Even if it's a reimbursement deal, yeah. take it. Right. Do the math on what they allow. Mm -hmm. It shows that you're getting a raise. And if they close or they fire you or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you're going, okay, thank you, bye-bye. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you're more <laughs> valuable. And yeah. then this is another thing. I was doing it as a survival technique, right? It was like, look. Mm -hmm. Um, the, everybody else that didn't do this, they're expendable. Right. But they got money into me. <laughs> they have invested in me. <laughs> so that's that's 10000 so 11000 whatever dollars. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to, uh, you want to position yourself so that they look around and go, who's most valuable to us? Well, who right. have we got money, a lot of money into? Not yeah. who we're paying a lot of money, because they mm -hmm. let go of those folks. But who do we have money into? Now it's just you're working it like it's a survival opportunity. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm going to say on that. I like this last one. I want to uh, go ahead and, and close with two things. Set your financial future on autopilot. That's on page 44. 
That's one of the mm. quotes on 44. Yeah, so if you look at the, it's later on in the, the book because by this time you're like 10 months in, right? So these things are now becoming your habit, right? Things are on idle pilot. Mm -hmm. So you want to start to see how can you automate mm -hmm. some of these things. So how can you set your savings account up to or your income to automatically deposit, mm -hmm. right? Your check mm -hmm. to be deposited into a savings account. But then also how can you set up or automate your investment account? So how can you start to not only now have that behavior mm -hmm. for yourself, but set up certain systems to where now you're you're making money, you're not second guessing it, right? That's right. You're not right. thinking about it. It's like every time I get paid, a certain percentage goes to me, a certain percentage goes to my savings, a certain percentage goes to my investments, a certain percentage goes to my fun fund. I tell people create a fun fund. Fun fund. Yes, sometimes you want to have fun, so a certain percentage is going there. So by the time, um, as you continue to um, um, commit to this planner, mm -hmm. you're positioning yourself to be an autopilot. And there's nothing like having something automated. We know how we wake up every morning and drive to work. Yeah. Right? We don't even yeah. think about it sometimes. Yeah. We just yeah. get there. That's how we really want you to be with your finances, where you automatically know what needs to be done so that you can take more control. That's good. That's good. And then at the very end, um, on page 50, we've got financial reality recheck. You start off with finality, a financial a check, right? Or a reality check. Yep. And then now we have an opportunity to recheck. This is kind of saying, hey, where are you at now? Yep. You've applied these things, where are you at? Mm -hmm. Is that what you meant for this? Yeah, so I want you to uh, see where you were in the beginning and then go to where are you now, right? If some of those unhealthy financial behaviors are still checked, what are some of the things you need to do, right? Um, going into the, the next 12 months, how can you start to improve some of those things? The goal is that you start to see your progress, right? Before you didn't want to see everything because you were kind of nervous about what you had to see. Now you embrace that now. You're like, okay, I know I have improved because I can feel it. I'm walking it. I can see it. So let me do this reality check just to see how much my behavior has That's improved. good. I love that. And, our, you know, it says here, our mission, building healthy financial behaviors to achieve financial freedom. And that's what it's all about. Where can they find more information about you? Yeah, so they can find more information on my website, www1428 or yeah, 1428fw.com. So again, that's www.1428fw.com. Um, you can also uh, send me an email, 1428lfw at gmail.com. And then you can also find me on social media, uh, Twitter, Facebook, as well as Instagram at 1428fw. That's good. Now, this is also, is it also on Amazon? Yes, yes, yes. You can find my book on Amazon as well. Uh, we'll include a link, but you just go to Amazon and search Financial Master Planner. That's good stuff. We, you know, I certainly appreciate you talk, coming in and talking to the Earn Every Dime onlineers or some of my, you know, some of my other platforms, the people that i actually going to push this out to, to let them know that, you know what, you don't have to have a Ph.D. in finances to get control of yours, right? Sometimes it's as simple as just a guy, just something to help you, you know, kind of walk through 12 months, see where you're at, take the reality checks, and then take the reality rechecks mm -hmm. and continue on from there. So, hey, man, I appreciate you coming on the show and talking mm -hmm. to my folks. Is there anything uh, they can look forward to coming up? Oh, yes. So my uh, spring is going to be busy, but full of uh, just helping people do what they want to do with their money. So I am doing a, a conference January 28th uh, with a, a local organization here, WIMCAT. And then I'll be having uh, many different workshops because we know what's coming up tax time. And that's typically an opportunity where people mm -hmm. want to spend. That's right. Right. Yeah. So what we want to do is help you spend but really, really put you in a position where you have that freedom and control in your spending. So I'll be putting out a lot of workshops that focus on what to do with your taxes um, as well as ways to invest and when should you really start to buy some of the things so that you don't have to be in those Christmas lines or waiting for Cyber Monday to get the best deals. So they should look at maybe your website to see what's coming up. You got yeah, some courses go to, coming up too? Yep, go to my website. Oh, I'm launching an online um, course. So we're going to put this planner um, 
coupled with the online course to really help you engage differently with your finances and you'll hear my lovely self uh, standing up there and encouraging you inspiring you and helping you take control of your finances but yeah if you go to my website you'll see the events that I have coming up as well as the online workshop all right guys hear this information but more importantly use it use it now listen if you are an information overload right now I can tell you uh, Dondre will come in and help you right now I, that might be more expensive but you never know it might be the thing that's most valuable helping you put all of these things into place all right you guys have a good time and go get your freedom by getting your money right